Today we're going to do a very brief introduction to HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. The role of HTML is to specify the structure of web pages to web browsers, like Chrome. Uh, and to do that, HTML documents consists of a series of elements. So today we're going to define some terminology. So when we see this terminology later, we'll be familiar with it, as well as get a sense of how these documents are structured um, and see some different examples of that. All right, lots of terminology here. This entire thing on the slide is an HTML element. An HTML element is comprised of three different parts. An opening tag, that's this part here, the content, and then a closing tag. You'll notice that opening tags um, have uh, angle brackets, uh, as do closing tags. In between the angle brackets is something, which in this case is a P, which refers to paragraph. Closing tag has the same symbol repeated, the P for paragraph, but is uh, preceded by a slash to designate it as a closing tag. Okay. The content is what's actually displayed in the web browser. The tags are not displayed at all. In HTML elements can contain other HTML ele elements. However, when they do so, they must be balanced. What that means is that a child element must be contained completely within its parent element. Um, I think this is easier explained with an example than like a definition. You can see here that these are balanced. Um, and what I mean here is the word very, which has um, as part of the strong element here. So here's the opening tag, closing tag. The Both the opening and closing tag are completely enclosed within the paragraph element, which says my cat is, then the very grumpy. Um, so this is what we're looking for, and this is what we used to stack to verify um, in the previous unit. These, however, are not balanced, so this isn't going to work. Um, here is where the paragraph element starts. Here is where the strong element starts, and look, we ended the paragraph element uh, before the strong element, so these tags are not balanced, so that will not work. we got to do it like this one. Um, void elements. So not every element has an opening tag and a closing tag because not every element has some like text between the tags. Um, we call these void elements. And so um, it's just a single tag and we do have the slash um, just before the closing angle bracket. So you can see here a tag for an image. Um, here is the opening angle bracket. Here's the closing angle bracket and it's got a slash in front of it which designates this as a complete balanced tag. It's just a void element. All right, so in addition to having the tag and the content, um, some elements can have attributes, and those attributes are specified as a key value pairs. Um, the syntax for this is the name of the attribute, followed by the equal sign, followed by the value in double quotes. Um, and if there are multiple attributes, which there can be, uh, they're just separated by spaces. Okay, so here we're assigning um, a specific value editor note um, to the class attribute of this paragraph tag. We'll see some more examples of that as we go to. All right, so let's switch over here and take a look at the index.html file, which is in your project already. Um, we're not going to type this together. Uh, we're just going to read through it together, and I'm going to highlight some different aspects of the file and show you how we can view this in your browser. Um, at the start of every HTML file, we need to specify the doc type. Uh, that is done right here. This is a pretty standard way of doing it. You'll see other versions. You'll see it perhaps referred to as XHTML and things like that. Nothing really to worry about, we just need the doc type. Um, everything has to go within the HTML element. So here's our HTML element, the opening tag, and here's the closing one. Um, inside of the HTML, and you'll notice how this is formatted to make it clear 
um, which elements are inside of which other elements. So you can clearly see here head is inside of HTML. The head element defines certain information about the page that doesn't show up on the page um, itself in the web browser. So here we're specifying what character set we're using in terms of rendering the different characters. UTF-8, the standard for um, English language. Um, and then we're specifying the title of the page. The title of the page might show up in the name of the tab in the web browser, for example, um, but it doesn't show up on the page proper. Um, so meta here, the meta tag here is an example of a void element. Um, you'll notice how it's closed here, whereas title is more traditional with content in between an opening tag and a closing tag. All right, here's the end of the head section for the HTML document and the start of the body section. Everything in the body section is what's going to be displayed on the page. Um, there are a lot of tags. We're just going to look at a few. Um, there's a whole series of what are called heading tags. This is H1. It's the biggest heading. Um, there's certain formatting associated with it. Um, HTML originally was was intended such that the tags were semantic in nature, not just syntactic. Um, so using an H1 tag implies something about that content other than just how it's formatted. I would say we've moved away from that somewhat. Um, if you look a lot at a lot of modern HTML, um, the, the semantic nature of using tags has, has been lost to a degree. Um, but uh, we can we can still try to do that when when possible, but that's part of the H1. There's also H2, H3, H4, H5, each smaller headings. Here's a void tag, a void element for image. Um, this displays an image. Here's an example of attributes as well uh, that we saw on the slides. So the source attribute specifies the partial path to the image file to load. Um, and the alt attribute specifies the alternative text, which is really important for uh, accessibility. Um, screen readers um, and other assistive technologies can leverage that to explain what the image is. Here's the um, paragraph tag that we saw in the slides as well. So here's a paragraph of text at Mozilla, we're a global community of, the paragraph tag ends, and then we have here a list. Um, there's both UL and OL. UL is an uh, unordered list. OL is an ordered list. Um, unordered lists are defined are displayed as bullets. Ordered lists are displayed as numbers. Um, and so this is an unordered list with three elements in that list: technologists, thinkers, builders. So here's our LI is a list item. So there's all these abbreviations, uh, but notice how the tag uh, that is opened here. Here's the closing tag, and that's completely inside of the unordered list. So this will give us three bullet points. Here's another paragraph um, like the one above. Here's another paragraph like the one above. Here's a new tag. This is the A tag, which stands for anchor. Um, it has an attribute, which is the href. Uh, this is basically when you click on this text in the web client, where will you go? And you will go to the URL specified here as part of the href attribute. I'll take you off to that particular web page. Um, one thing we'll see more of later, um, and this is where we start to lose sight of the semantic advantages of HTML, um, is the div. Um, div doesn't carry really any semantic meaning. Um, so it's often used for block elements um, on the page, as the comment notes here, uh, you, you know, best practices would be not to override divs. In reality, you're going to see divs everywhere. Um, but it's a way for us to group certain elements together and then style them or, or apply other code to them in different ways. So here's an example of a div um, that contains a button. Um, and so here's an, another new tag button. Here's the opening tag, closing tag. The name of the button is click me. Um, and here we're using a, a specific attribute called the class attribute. We're going to see lots of use of the class attribute. Um, we do that to group related elements into the same class. Um, and that can be helpful um, when we want to apply certain styling to all of those elements or this is kind of a long comment, or when we're listening for events. The styling we're gonna see in a moment, the listening for events is gonna be like a 
next lesson type thing. All right, so here's a complete, oh, and then we close the div, we close the body, we close the HTML. So here's a complete HTML file. Um, with the recommended extensions as part of this project, um, assuming you have installed them, you can right click on an HTML file here, like index.html, and choose open with live server. And when you do that, it will open up the page um, in your web client. Um, and so here it is, a web client. Um, and so we can see the header, the image, the text that we saw, the link, and the button is all displayed here on the page. So this VS Code extension makes it very easy um, to test out our web pages.